one of the most important things in being able to climb the ladder and ha find success is being able to adapt to the meta. And right now we are in a period of time uh, of Gwent right after this big patch where the meta is incredibly fast. There's, or in other words, there's a lot of high tempo or high strength plays. You'll see, often see like end game boards that have an incredible amount of strength on it, right? Uh, at least until the meta maybe slows down, it's going to be like that for a while, and you need to be able to react to that. And by the way, I'm playing Skoatel Mulligan. I'm playing playing a Panda's uh, version of it, and it's really incredibly good. I love. It's such a crazy like. I know it's getting a lot of flack right now for being you know uh meta deck uh net deck so powerful. Why why is this so powerful? But if you do actually play it, it is a lot of fun. There's a lot of like specific and precise mechanical decision making all along throughout the entire game. And not even just like, even if you have played Skull Tower before, I think this is so very different from what is existed previously that even you, you, even if you have played Skull Tower before or a lot of it, you're still going into this blind. I think it's really interesting. It's like playing. It's so, it's so vastly different from uh, the way you play other game uh, decks, deck archetypes. And in this situation right here, he just gave up the round very quickly because, um, as you'll find out here pretty soon, he's the kind of deck archetype that likes to draw out round as much as possible. And uh, my Mulligan Skull Tau is pretty much the same way. So he just he doesn't want to face me when when he's going up against all these uh, all these elves, all these units that are going to be getting all buffs uh, in addition to these movement um, synergies. But I don't really have all that many movement synergies, so he's just going to give up the round. And also, I went first, so it's a it's a lot worse that he went uh, and did that. But still, he doesn't want to have to go up against the massive amount of tempo that I got on the board initially, and that's part of what makes this deck so incredibly strong is that it really takes control of the game really fast. And even if you do go first, it's actually not even that big of a deal because uh, you get those Mulligan units out. Okay, so this game is actually so much of a slog that I'm going to just speed it up a little bit. <clears throat> but the basic idea for this round is I'm just trying to get this uh, this Yaven down and pass. Potentially, I could have played Yaven on the first round and see where it goes from there, but I'd rather just take my uh, my free pass here. And actually, there's like a bit of a funny thing because there's not actually I'm not actually certain whether or not I should have played Yavin there it may seem straightforward and simple of course you play Yavin on that round two right but the thing is you're not actually gaining any card advantage you're just cycling that card out of your deck and is that good enough you could you could keep that card go into the next round and then play it again and then you can stack uh, like debil debilitating effects on it and you still get the card back. I don't know. It, it, it's a little bit complicated, a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm trying to explain right now, but something I'm definitely going to look up later. Yeah, because th these kind of things like I really need to be able to like draw out and visualize and like count every single stat. But for now, we're just going to be focusing on this one particular aspect of being able to react to the meta. And also, I'm going to speed this way up because this takes forever. Uh and the video is messing up a little bit. And I just wanted to show like the importance of like, uh, I could just skip to the end, but then you miss out on how it actually got to that point. Okay, three times speed is should be fine. Also, it didn't really help that. <laughs> in addition to having, you know, like 10, 10 11 cards each in round three, uh, the actual time to take these rounds was longer than usual because there's just like, again, there's so many like such a wealth of like decision making to make in this Mulligan Skull Tau. It's not immediate. It is. It is very. It has a very high raw power. But at the same time, like to be able to get like the highest level of power you can out of it, you need to be able to play. Uh, be able to play it correctly. Which is something I'm really struggling with. And something like you can't really express it through like a written guide or even a video guide. Really, you just need to be able to like play it and get into your muscle memory certain things. And like uh, habits and thought processes. So I'm just taking things very slow. And also, I'm not saying that this is the perfect way to play this deck at all. I'm just. 
<laughs> in fact, I'm probably playing it wrong. <laughs> There is a notable aspect where I do get something wrong. Okay, but so basically the idea is, as you can probably see right now, this, this guy is building up an incredible amount of strength in this middle row, and I'm actually not really stopping it. I'm allowing him to build this up. Uh, potentially, it could be better for me to just uh, try and move his units around, but he's just going to move, move his units around again anyway. So I decide to let him just keep building up his units in the middle and then move his other units as necessary. And this is kind of where I make a mistake. I get a little bit impatient. What I should have done is started playing the... Uh, the five strength, um, what are they called? I have them written down right here. Uh, vanguards. I should have started playing the vanguards. Um, there was really no reason for me not to do that. That's kind of like a mechanical issue that I'm having. I should be playing those, uh, those vanguards a little bit sooner. And see, uh, as you can see, he has a 20 strength unit down, right? It's a pretty big issue. I want to have that in the middle row, but obviously I have no more movement left. And also, I believe he also plays one more big unit. On the seed row. No, he doesn't. Okay, so I just played my uh <laughs> I just played my commander sword. So I'm down by 45 points, right? And this is adapting to the meta. Uh this card, Marigold Hellstorm, damage all units on the row by half their power, ignore armor. It's a pretty big one. So that means you can use it in this sp specific matchup against a hyper uh, strengthening Skellige. You can use it against the deck that I'm playing with, uh, as you can see, my middle row right here, a lot of very high strength units on one row. Uh, and a lot of them will be running Commander Storm because Panda did. And that's what I'm doing. And a lot of people are probably net decking the same thing. And then you can use it against uh, Northern Realms Armor, which is running around quite a bit right now. And they get really high strength uh, percentages as well, up to like 20. And since it ignores armor, you effectively nullify like their big like protector. Right. So that's three very key, huge matchups that are going around the meta right now. And being able to counter it with a card like Marigold's Hailstorm, uh, Hailstorm is incredible. So just kind of like a minor thing. Uh, I used Commander's Horn first instead of Marigold's Han uh, Hailstorm. Because I was basically hoping for that exact uh, that exact thing where he goes and goes for um, uh, a war cry on these units. Instead of actually Marigold Hailstorming my own units. In which my Commander's Horn would have been less useful. But I feel like the, the risk was calculated enough to go for the Marigold's Hailstorm last. And as you can see, it pays off from 45 to plus 35. So that's what <laughs> math that's 80. I did 80 points of damage or uh, I took an 80 point strength advantage with one card, one silver card, because the entire game, I let him build up his stuff and they actually could have been even better. It could have been 95 if I had moved this to the middle row uh, at the right time. <laughs> so there it is. Miracle Teller Storm, a meta tech. You should probably have this in pretty much every single one of your decks. Especially in like Skoa Tau, where like their silver slots are really loose. Like you can you can really switch them out. I'm pretty sure Northern Realms, I haven't played them yet. Pretty sure their silver slots are pretty loose. And Skelligas are generally pretty flexible as well. The only ones I can't the ones I can't think afford it are maybe monsters. But monsters isn't really being played. And maybe Nilfgaard. But just about everyone else should be running Marigold Hellstorm because it's a very fast, hyper tempo kind of meta, and you want to be able to counter it with 80 plus strength plays. It's crazy. Thanks for watching.